USB-C. What is it? How does it work? And why you might want to hold off from purchasing a product that relies purely on USB-C. What's up guys, it's Adam from ACR Tech, and today we're talking about the pros and the cons of USB-C. Of course, USB-C does bring a lot of positive aspects to the table, but there is also some big negatives that may change your mind on this brand new port. Stick around to find out. So the pros. By now everyone should know that USB-C is fast. It can transfer data at speeds up to 10 gigabytes per second, which doubles the amount of the previous USB 3.0, which transfers data at a mere 5 gigabytes per second. USB-C will charge your devices faster. However, if your phone comes with quick charge, then USB-C will not affect the charge time. But if you do have a laptop that can charge through USB-C, it will be slightly faster. Now, we all know the first world struggle of not being able to plug in a micro USB port in the right way. USB-C has got you covered with this as it has its nice oval shaped design which is reversible just like Apple's lightning cable. Speaking of Apple, I'm going to eliminate a myth right now. Apple did not invent USB-C. Despite popular belief, Apple is not the only one responsible. A full list of contributors to the project can be found in the Universal Serial Bus Revision 3.1 specification, which will be linked in the description. Skip to page 10 of the USB Type-C specification release 1.0 document and you'll find that Apple is listed, but so is Acon, and Advanced Micro Devices, and Agilent Technologies, and Cypress Semiconductor Technologies, and Foxconn and Google, and Intel, Lenovo, Nokia, Microsoft, Samsung, Seagate, and many more. Just about every name in the book. So despite popular belief, Apple were not the ones to invent USB-C, even if they were the first ones to implement it into a laptop. And if you still don't believe me, if Apple did invent USB-C, do you really think that they would let other companies like Google, Dell, Razer, Nexus, etc. to utilize USB-C within their own products? No, they wouldn't, because we know what Apple is like. If something is theirs, it's theirs, and that's how it is. Anyway, back on topic, USB-C is multifunctional, can be used as a display port, a charging port, and a data transfer port. Now this sounds pretty near to a mosquito, however this forces you to buy adapters to be able to utilize slightly older technologies, such as USB Type-A, HDMI, micro USB and many more. This is where we begin to head to the downfalls of USB-C. The price, oh my god, the price. Currently there isn't that much competition for USB-C because not many people are requiring USB-C. And because of this, adapters and cables are quite rare. And because they're rare, once you find these, you're going to have to empty out your wallet. I recently bought a USB-C to HDMI adapter for my new XPS 13, which set me back $70. Not to mention if I opted for the Apple brand, it would set me back $130. Like what the f***? Over $100 for an adapter? That is a joke. Now you might be saying, why don't you just opt for the cheaper, lesser known brands, and then everything's going to be fine. Well, that's what you think. Because reason number one, in the adapter department, they're just isn't any cheaper brands, and in the cable department, many lesser known companies have been found to be creating the USB Type-C connectors improperly. This means that the cable could potentially damage your hardware. This has mainly been found with the USB Type-A to USB Type-C cables as USB Type-A simply can't handle what the USB Type-C is demanding. It was never designed for that. Now you might say on Amazon that most, if not all, USB-C cables have the USB seal of approval, which means it's safe to use, right? Wrong. Amazon doesn't require any companies to authenticate their claims. This means that any USB-C cable on Amazon could be built improperly, therefore damaging your hardware. This means that you have to opt for the bigger companies which have a reputation to hold, but this also means more money. However, USB Type-C is coming whether we like it or not. I recommend that you wait around until USB-C is more normal and ordinary so then the prices for adapters go down, other technologies can catch up, and they can provide proper regulation of USB Type-C. This has been Adam from ACR Tech, I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below your thoughts and opinions on USB Type-C and I hope to see you in the next video.